Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at types of materials. So let's get started. Now, to start off the topic on semiconductors and PN junctions, it's worth looking at the different types of materials that exist. So first of all, it says that materials can be divided into different groups based on their electrical properties. You're probably already familiar with materials that are conductors and insulators, but there is a third group called semiconductors. Let's just remind ourselves of what conductors and insulators are first of all. So you should already know that conductors allow electrons to flow through them and therefore conduct electricity. For example, metals and carbon are good conductors, whereas insulators do not allow electrons to flow through them and therefore do not conduct electricity. And some good examples of insulators are things like rubber, plastic and glass. Lastly, we have semiconductors and this is the one that is possible new to you. So it says here that semiconductors behave as insulators when pure, but can be made to conduct by adding an impurity or exposing them to heat or light etc. For example, silicon and germanium are good examples of semiconductors. So this concept of adding an impurity is known as doping and we'll actually see this in a different video. But you can also increase the temperature of a semiconductor material in order to get it to conduct better, or you can expose it to light and so on. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation of how electrons actually move inside a material. So let's imagine you were able to zoom in on a cross section of a conducting material, where the black dots here represent the nucleus of an atom and we've got the red dots which represent electrons that move about randomly in all directions. So without a potential difference or voltage applied to the conductor, the electrons will move at random and there's no overall motion. However, if we apply a potential difference or voltage to our conductor, then you'll notice what happens to the electrons this time. So let's say we have a positive terminal over here and a negative terminal over here, and you'll notice there's now a drift of electrons away from the negative electrode and towards the positive electrode. And that's because, remember, electrons are negatively charged and will be repelled away from the negative plate and will be attracted towards the positively charged plate. So this is what conduction looks like in a material. It's the net movement or overall movement of electrons through the material. But it doesn't need to be all of the electrons, which is why I've said net movement, which just means that the majority of the electrons will move. And you'll notice that going on in the simulation here where not all of the electrons are moving over towards the positive terminal. That's all for this video folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.